Hey everyone, and welcome to today's video about water filter certifications, where you are going to learn everything you need to know about NSF certifications for water filters for home use, including the pros and cons that come with them. Okay, first of all, what are NSF certifications for water filters? Well, in order to answer that question, we first need to talk about NSF standards, or rather NSF ANSI standards, as they're called when it comes to water filters. So NSF ANSI standards have been developed by the NSF working together with the ANSI. Now, the first thing to note here is that the NSF we are talking about, also called NSF International, is not to be confused with the government agency NSF, as in the National Science Foundation. So this may be a little confusing, but the National Science Foundation is a US government agency that supports research and education in science and engineering. But our NSF, which used to be called the National Sanitation Foundation, is a private not-for-profit organization that develops standards and protocols to test water filters. I mean, they do lots of other stuff too, but that's not really relevant for us right now. And ANSI stands for the American National Standards Institute, of course, which is another private nonprofit organization. So because water filters are not regulated by the government, NSF and ANSI have joined forces to come up with clearly defined testing methods and procedures to test water filters against. And these testing standards always cover material safety and structural integrity of a water filter. In other words, making sure that the water filter doesn't leach any toxic substances into the water. And depending on which standard is being tested, capabilities to eliminate harmful contaminants and or aesthetic impurities in water. When researching a water filter to buy for use at home, the standards you're going to stumble upon the most are NSF 42, 53, 58, and 401. And by the way, that's what I'll be calling them for the rest of the video, just NSF standards and NSF certifications because it just makes it so much easier than saying NSF ANSI the entire time. Okay, so aside from material safety, NSF standard 42 is for the reduction of aesthetic impurities only, most importantly chlorine, but also bad taste and odor in general. NSF 53 is for the reduction of contaminants with known health effects as defined by the US EPA and Health Canada. Two examples are lead and chromium-6. NSF 58 is for reverse osmosis systems only, so you won't find a standard with water filters that don't apply reverse osmosis. NSF 58 covers TDS reduction and reduction of various contaminants, many, if not all of them, with known health effects. And NSF 401 is for so-called emerging contaminants. So those are contaminants that have emerged in our water supplies relatively recently and that have health effects that aren't fully researched yet. So these four are the most common NSF standards for home water filters you'll find. Now, there are a few more like NSF 372 for low lead content or NSF 177 for shower filters, but most relevant to us are the four standards I just mentioned. And by the way, the number that is part of each standard's name, it reflects the order in which it got introduced. So it's not like a ranking system where a higher number means a better standard or anything like that. It's really just a naming thing. Okay, we know what NSF standards for water filters are. What now? Well, manufacturers and brands selling water filters can test their products against these standards. So instead of just making a bold claim that water filter XYZ can reduce lead, for example, a company can now actually prove that by having their filter independently tested against NSF standard 53 for lead reduction or NSF standard 58 if it's a reverse osmosis system. Now, ideally this testing is performed by either the NSF itself or the WQA or the IAPMO because to our knowledge, these are the only three organizations accredited by the ANSI to test water filters against NSF standards and award official NSF certifications. Now the testing is 100% independent from the applying water filter company. So the company cannot influence the test results in any way. And that's one reason why NSF certifications are great for us consumers. Because if a water filter holds a genuine NSF certification, then we can safely rely on whatever that certification warrants. And even better, we can check those certifications online. So we can go to these three directories, one from the NSF, one from the WQA, and one from the IAPMO, and I'll include the links in the video description below, and validate any NSF certification and contaminant reduction claims. Now, side note, and we confirmed this with the NSF directly, there is no difference between a certification awarded by the NSF itself versus the WQA or the IAPMO. And we know that some people believe that NSF is better than the other two, but that's just not the case. As long as we have the same certification, let's say NSF standard 53 for lead reduction, then it doesn't matter whether that certification was awarded by the NSF or the WQA or the IAPMO, because again, all three certification bodies are ANSI accredited. Okay, so let's check out what an NSF certification 
actually looks like. For example, if we go to the directory for water filters certified by the NSF and search for ZD010RP, which is the model number of the Zero Water 10 Cup Ready For Pitcher, then we'll get to this results page. And we can see that this Zero Water Pitcher model has two NSF certifications, one against NSF Standard 42 and one against NSF 53. And if we look more closely, we find what these specific certifications actually cover. For the NSF 42 certification, we have chlorine reduction and taste and odor reduction. And for the NSF 53 certification, we have chromium hexavalent, AKA chromium-6, lead, mercury, PFOA, and PFOS reduction. Also, we have a surface cycle of 17 gallons with both certifications. So the Zero Water 10 Cup Ready Pour Pitcher is certified against NSF standards 42 and 53 for the reduction of chlorine, taste, and odor, chromium-6, lead, mercury, PFOA, and PFOS, and all for a filter life of 17 gallons. We could now compare this to another water filter pitcher that we consider buying. And that's another beauty of NSF standards and certifications because everything is based on standardized testing methods. It allows us to compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges because let's say a company claims their water filter pitcher removes 99.99% lead, but that claim is not backed by any certification. Well, how do we know that what they're saying is actually true? And second of all, how did they test for lead reduction in the first place? We wouldn't know. But what we do know is that in order for the Zero Water 10 Cup Ready Pour to get an NSF standard 53 certification for lead reduction, it had to reduce lead levels from 150 parts per billion or PPB to less than five PPB in a challenge water test. So for this test, a water sample was spiked with a relatively high amount of lead and then sent through the Zero Water filter to see how much lead it could reduce. But not only that, the lead reduction also had to be tested at two different pH levels, 6.5 and 8.5. And at pH 8.5, some of the lead had to be present not only in dissolved, but also in particulate form with clearly defined particulate sizes. So in other words, in order to get reliable and comparable test results, nothing is left to chance when it comes to NSF standards. Quite the opposite. This also applies to the gallon rating. Now remember, the Zero Water Pitcher certification said 17 gallons filter life, which means that during the challenge water test, the pitcher was able to remove lead from 150 ppb to less than 5 ppb for a minimum of 17 gallons of water processed. In fact, testing for lead reduction must be conducted to 120 to 200% of the claimed filter life in order to have a safety margin. So 120% if a water filter comes with a filter life indicator and 200% if it doesn't. And this 120 to 200% rule applies to most contaminant testing as far as we know. So all of this sounds great, right? And there's nothing wrong with NSF standards and certifications for water filters at all? Well. No, <laughs> in our opinion, there are several problems. Now, some of these problems are inherent and others come from how companies and consumers make use of NSF certification. So let's go through these problems one by one. Firstly, getting a water filter tested and certified can be quite expensive. Now on their website, Aquasana says that they spend upwards of $100,000 per product. And according to a New York Times article quoting a representative from the NSF, it could cost well over $1 million if you get dozens or hundreds of contaminants certified against NSF standards. Also, the official NSF website says that, quote, NSF certification is not a one-time event, but involves regular on-site inspections of manufacturing capabilities and regular retesting of products to ensure that they continue to meet the same high standards required to maintain certification over time, which I'm sure isn't free. So, these costs may not be a burden for big players like Brita, but they are obviously a huge barrier for companies that want to enter the market. The second problem is that for many contaminants, there don't exist any NSF standards yet, like for haleocetic acids, which is a group of disinfection byproducts. Problem number three, and I have to say that we have mixed feelings about this one, concerns material safety and structural integrity. Now here's the deal. Even if a water filter leaches potentially harmful contaminants during testing, it can still get certified provided that the contaminant leaching didn't exceed the allowable concentrations. So this could mean new chemicals being introduced into your water that hadn't been there before, which is like the exact opposite of what you want to achieve using a water filter, right? Now at the same time, having an NSF certification for material safety and structural integrity is still better than not having one. You just need to know what that certification means. And this brings me to our next problem. Many people don't really seem to understand what a specific NSF certification warrants. And 
What I mean by that is that they see the NSF logo on the packaging of a water filter and they're automatically going to assume that this water filter is superior to any water filter not carrying the NSF logo. Or they might see two water filters, both certified against NSF standard 53 and think that the two certifications are inevitably the same. Or they think that if a water filter is certified for lead reduction, then it will remove 100% lead from their water no matter what. But chances are that none of this is true. So for one, uncertified water filters can be equally effective or even more effective at removing overall water contamination than their certified counterparts. Now, this is something that we've seen in our own lab testing. The problem, of course, is that if you as a consumer don't conduct your own lab testing like we do, and there are no NSF certifications either, then it's very difficult to know if a manufacturer's claims for contaminant reduction are true. Now, there may be test data on the company's website that you can check because many companies do their own testing using independent labs. And while these can't award official NSF certifications, these labs can still be accredited and capable of performing proper testing against NSF standards, but that's up to you to check. So you can try to find any lab reports and see if they list the lab that had conducted the testing. Now also check for how many gallons contaminant reduction was tested for because what some companies do is they test their filters at the beginning of the filter life and not at the end as would be required. And there could be other problems too, like the test data being fake. So the bottom line is that compared to genuine NSF certifications, a company's own testing needs to be taken with a grain of salt. By the way, we assume the number one reason for companies doing their own testing is to avoid certification fees, which can be really high as discussed earlier. But even with a genuine NSF certification at hand, you need to check what exactly it covers because not all certifications are created equal. One water filter may be NSF standard 53 certified for lead and chromium six reduction for 500 gallons filter life, which is great. And another filter may be standard 53 certified for turbidity reduction or standard 42 certified for chlorine reduction for 100 gallons, which is totally different. There are even water filters that are certified for material safety and structural integrity only. And please don't think that an NSF certification for a certain contaminant or impurity guarantees 100% reduction when you use it on your own water supply, because it doesn't. To reuse one of our previous examples, what a certification for lead reduction means is that a water filter was able to reduce lead from 150 parts per billion to less than five parts per billion. This means that a minimum reduction rate of 96.7% at that level. The reduction rate you will see with your water will likely be different because you probably start at a different lead level. And likewise, a certification for chromium-6 means reduction from 0.3 to less than 0.1 parts per million. So a minimum reduction rate of 66.7% at that level. Also 66.7% is nowhere near 100%, obviously. By the way, if you wanna know the exact reduction rate that a water filter could achieve during its NSF testing, check its performance data sheet. Most manufacturers publish these. And all in all, you need to do your due diligence because companies will use their NSF certifications to advertise their water filters Nothing wrong with that, of course, but it feels like some companies get their water filters certified just so they can print the NSF logo on their product box. So they will test against a bunch of easier to remove contaminants and impurities like chlorine or get certified for material safety and structural integrity just so they can say that they're NSF certified or certified against X number of contaminants and thus more effective than the competition, which again, isn't always true. All right, so in summary, NSF standards and certifications can be a great tool for consumers to make sure that the water filters they are buying are tested for material safety and or contaminant reduction. However, you need to do your research, checking and comparing each NSF certification and performance data sheet if available, what are the specific contaminants that a water filter is certified to reduce, and what was the average removal percentage. Also, NSF certified, doesn't guarantee best or better than any uncertified water filter, and some filters come without certification but are backed by the company's own valid test data. We do hope you enjoyed this video and that we were able to answer any questions you may have had about water filter certifications. Now, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And remember, you can always support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Speaking of which, if you are considering purchasing a water filter soon, you can head on over to our channel and check it out. It's full of reviews in which we conduct our own lab testing to find out how effective different water filters are under real life conditions. So you can find all sorts of useful information there. See you next time.